Hey, this is most excellent. You dropping by on a holiday weekend. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot. And this is Juneteenth. That is to say it's Monday, June 19th. This is a brand new holiday for America. We've only had it for a couple years. And we don't get to trade on this day. But they can't stop us from doing our research and due diligence. Now, I'm always doing research, looking for stocks under five bucks on any market that have potential to make us money. We like to call these hot penny stocks. Now, I do my research for hot penny stocks by looking at the charts first. I don't pay any mind to the filings or the news presses until I find a chart that has heat. What's heat? Well, maybe it's a breakout setup or a lot of volume coming in or maybe just a surge going to the moon. Whatever it is, when I find a chart that has heat, then I go looking for that catalyst, looking for that match that's going to set that chart on fire. When I find it, I put it on my short list of stocks I'm going to share with you. Then I narrow that down and I bring you the best goodies that I think I've got. Well, I've got a few of those to share with you right now. This first ticker is actually a request. It came through YouTube and Twitter. This is NGL Energy Partners, ticker NGL. NGL has got a hot chart. She's been running strong. She's making good revenues and she's got some good strong news. But what's really got my interest are the economic conditions. This company is working with oil and the oil production is being cut down right now, which is putting more value on oil. So we could see some crazy surges with companies like this. So NGL, she finished the day at $4.18 and just a little over 3% gains. Now, she is a penny stock on the New York Stock Exchange. So what does NGL do? Well, looking at a description in one of their news presses, they tell us that NGL is a Delaware limited partnership. They're a diversified midstream energy company that transports, stores, markets, and provides other logistic services for crude oil, natural gas liquids, and other products, and transports treats and disposes of produced water generated as part of the oil and natural gas production processes. Now to give us a little more clarity on what the company does, I've jumped into their most recent 10K, their financial report, and this is really big. There has got to be over 150 pages in this, and they've got lots of information. So if you're really curious about the company, this is the gold mine of information. Now, I'm only going to tag on to a few things here so you have a little more idea of what the company's actually involved with. They break down their three segments for us here. Our water solution segment, they transport, treat, recycle, and dispose of water generated from crude oil and natural gas productions. Our crude oil logistics segment purchases crude oil from producers, marketers, and transports it to refineries for resale at pipeline injection stations, storage terminals, barge loading facilities, rail facilities, refineries, blah, blah, blah. Our liquid logistics segment conducts supply operations for natural gas liquids, refined petroleum products, and biodiesel to a broad range of commercial, retail, and industrial customers across the United States and Canada. These operations are conducted through our 25 owned terminals. But those 25 terminals are just with liquid logistics. They have got lots of facilities, and I really don't know how many they've got. I've counted up on this map. We've got over 130 on this map, including these huge long pipelines over 500 and 300 miles long. Few more details about the company. We operate in a number of the most prolific crude oil and natural gas producing areas in the United States, including the Delaware Basin in New Mexico and Texas, the DJ Basin in Colorado, the Eagle Ford Basin in Texas. With a system that handled approximately 849 million barrels of produced water across its areas of operations during the year of March 31st, 2023. Our system has approximately 730 miles of newly built in-service large diameter produced water pipelines connected to 57 active saltwater disposal facilities and 125 active disposal wells. We own 93 water treatment and disposal facilities, including 197 injection wells. This is what I'm saying, folks. I have no clue how many facilities they've got. They've just got so many of them. Our foundation asset in this agreement is the Grand Mesa Pipeline, 
a 555 mile pipeline that transports crude oil from Colorado to Oklahoma and three 24 inch bi-directional pipelines, each capable of moving 360,000 barrels per day. So you can see folks, lots of big numbers, lots of facilities, they're doing lots of work. So the company's in business and doing well. What was the relative volume around the company today? Good, we've got over 100% increase, going from 620,000 shares to 1.3 million. Share structure for NGL, not bad. I don't know what the float is. I honestly didn't look it up. I just can't ever really find a true number, so I just don't do that often. Outstanding share count, though, isn't bad. That's 131 million. So whatever the float is, it's under 131 million. Looking at her financials, they're good. She has been increasing every year, except for COVID year. She had a little bit of a dip here. But at the end of their fiscal year, March 2023, they had a total of $8.6 billion revenue. We know it's billions because we got to add three more zeros to all these numbers down here on any of these charts. So at the end of their fiscal year, March 2023, they did $1 billion in gross profit. Quarterly, well, they did drop a little bit, going from $2.5 billion down to $2 billion, but they're making steady revenues. They're doing okay. Disclosures for the company. Well, there's their most recent financial that we had dipped into. Lots of information in there. And we've got an 8K here that is worthy of considering. They tell us here that on March 30th of this year, the company completed the sale of its marine assets for $111 million in cash, less $7.5 million for expenses. They also go on to tell us that they used a portion of these proceeds from the sale to repay the outstanding and marine equipment loan of approximately $39 million. However, they still got lots of debt on the books. As of March 31st, 2023, their total outstanding debt was slightly below $2.9 billion. So they're making money, but boy, they owe a lot of money as well. Now, one other thing I want to show you before we go look at the chart is some news. Now, chances are you've heard news about OPEC slashing production of oil, and this is going to affect the oil market, which could help a company like this. They tell us here, oil prices surge after OPEC and producers announce surprise cuts. Saudi Arabia said it would start a voluntary reduction in the production of crude oil alongside other members of OPEC. The cuts will start in May and last through the end of the year. Oil producers agreed to slash output by 2 million barrels a day, the largest cut since the start of the pandemic. Saudi Arabia now says it will cut oil production by another half million barrels a day. Meanwhile, Iraq will slash production by 211,000 barrels per day, and the United Emirates will decrease output by 144,000 barrels a day, along with Kuwait, Algeria, and Oman, who will also be lowering their production. The collective output by the nine members of OPEC totals 1.6 million barrels per day being cut. They increased their price forecast for Brent this December to $95 per barrel. Now, there have been some crazy projections out there about where oil could go if this doesn't change, because right now, as things sit, there is not enough oil being produced to meet everybody's needs in the world. Somebody is going to be left out. Prices are going to skyrocket. JP Morgan has said they believe it could go anywhere from $200 to $400 a barrel. I've seen other price projections of $300, $170. We are looking at some huge price projections here. So this company could do very well. Let's go take a look at that chart. Let's do some charting now. We're going to be using my free trading platform, Think or Swim. You get this just by signing up with TD Ameritrade. And that's free too. So we are looking at NGL, Energy Partners, ticker NGL, and this is a six-month, four-hour view. We got our low bubble of $1 back in December of last year when she changed her trend, and Friday she had a new high of $4.25. Now let's put some perspective on this chart. I'm going to grab my regression channel and where the trend changed on that low bubble, that's where I'm going to poke. You can poke anywhere on that day, and then just drag it to current times and poke again. 
Now, what I see here is not only the price in that channel, but our 200-day SMA is also stuck in that channel. She came out of it once, fell down hard and bounced on the 200-day SMA, got close to the bottom of the channel, and now she's been climbing ever since then. All of our SMAs, even the 200-day, is now turned and churning up. Our volume has been increasing for the last three weeks, getting stronger and stronger, as have our oscillators. Our PPO and our MACD are both pushing up and climbing, and our RSI is currently at 63. Let's get rid of this so we can see clearly. Jump down to our 20-day, one-hour view. Nice climb here. She is on top of her 200-day SMA. She bounced on it one time, and now she's paying heed to that 50-day SMA. Clear up here. And actually, looks like she's graduated up to the 20-day SMA. The 9-day is bouncing off of the 20. Have had some aftermarket activity here, a little bit of up and a little bit of down, but she's still on top of the 9. Oscillators are cooling off with that sideways activity after market, and the RSI has fallen down to 56. Five day, five minute. So she is predominantly climbing right now. You can see that our 200 day SMA was level three days ago, and now she is pushing up. She has bounced off of that 200 and gone up to her 50 day, and it looks like that's where she's hanging out right now. Oscillators are a wee bit cool. Everything is pulling down aftermarket hours, but the chart show promise. She's been climbing for a long time. She's making good revenues. Things are looking good for the company. And with the economics of oil, God only knows what could happen. It belongs on your watch chart, maybe for tomorrow, maybe for next week. But NGL, she could have a very strong pop. Our next stock, it is a legitimate hot penny stock from the OTC. This is ticker CAVR Kavu Resources. Though here recently, they just changed their name to Paragon X Holdings. Now this company's got everything going on for it right now. She's got a hot chart, tick. I mean, this thing has been running since the beginning of May. It's been pushing up to that 200, broke the 200, and it is now sitting on top with a swarm of volume coming in. What we need is a hot catalyst. Tick, we got that too. We had news come out on June 9th. It's lingering, right? It's a little old, but it is pushing. This is big news. We've been waiting for this news for two years and it adds a ton of revenues to the books. So right now is a perfect time to be looking at CAVR. She finished the day on Friday at a real low price, double zero eight one, and she had almost 30% gains. She's on the pink tier of the OTC. She's current. She's got that verified profile and transfer agent we're always talking about, so she's looking good. And she has independent directors. Now, you don't need independent directors unless you're going to uplist. It's one of the only reasons I know you need them. Now, I haven't read anything here, but why have them on the payroll if you're not going to use them? So, things could be in the works right now. So, what does Paragon do? Well, they tell us here that Paragon is a vertically integrated platform company focused on developing and building lifestyle brands. The company acquires undervalued assets and manages a diversified portfolio of technology, education, real estate, and now entertainment companies. They build buildings, they renovate them, they have software as a service, uh, they coordinate concerts, they do a lot of different things. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Right, because it is Monday, they've cleared the board, so I can't even see what we did Friday, but that's okay. I like to run over here to Yahoo Finance. If you put in the ticker and hit historical data, it'll show you every single day's high, low, open, close volume, so you get all the information right here. We can see on June 16th, Friday, she did 5.3 million shares, which was more than the day before, about even with Wednesday, but Monday or Tuesday was a very strong day with 16 million shares. Her average on that day was 3.7, and she did 5.3, so we had a strong day. Paragon share structure, pretty high. We got 1.7 billion outstanding shares, looks like the float could be three quarter billion, which is a lot of shares. And considering that we see independent directors over here, which means they may be thinking about uplisting, we have to consider the fact that they may be thinking about doing a reverse split. It's very probable.
Now, if they're only going to the QB, the minimum bid price is one cent. We're right under that. So I don't see a reverse split if they wanted to go there. However, if they want to go to the NASDAQ, that's three bucks. That's a huge split. So it's something you got to keep in mind. Not to mention, they could have already voted on this eight months ago said that they were going to do a reverse split at management's discretion, which means they don't have to inform us when it happens. So you could wake up one morning and boom, the reverse split happened. And you go, I didn't see a press release. You're not going to. They voted on it back then. They don't have to tell us again when they implement it. So that's something you always have to be leery of when you see a lot of shares sitting on the books. They may have a pre-approved reverse split. Checking out the financials for Paragon. She's been increasing over the last three years, going from 8.2 million, clear up to 11.4 million. On the quarterly, well, she's all over the place, but she is making more. She's having a good strong year at 5.1 million, getting to keep over 1 million of that. But the news we're gonna look at that just came out, wow, does that change their revenue picture in a huge, huge way. Disclosures for CAVR, we have nothing since 2019 and all of their financials look good. So let's dive on into that news. So I see three pieces of news here we need to catch up on. One, I've already told you, they changed their name. They did that back in February. Then in March, Paragon X Holdings subsidiary Sincori Builders closed on a $3.5 million land sale and announces major increase in net income in 2022. That is good news. But then we had a huge piece of news come out June 9th. Paragon X reaches an agreement on major acquisition, adding up to $60 million in new annual revenues. In this news press, they tell us the company announced it had finally reached a definitive agreement with a significant infrastructure company to add up to $60 million in annual revenue, the first phase of a multi-phase series of transactions. We started this process when Russ and Bob brought me on as the chief executive officer over two years ago. This was an extraordinary effort by the entire management team and an incredible win for our shareholders. This was my vision for some time. With the revenue of over $60 million a year and a laser focused on further growth in the infrastructure space, the company will divest non-infrastructure related assets and reorganize the leadership team, meaning they're going to probably sell off some assets. There's a possibility they could do a spin out, but chances are they're going to sell them. The company reiterated that its expectation to close the transaction is still by the end of June. And here we are halfway through it. So there's your catalyst. They've got this huge deal that's going to add $60 million of revenue and they're doing $11 million right now. And that is supposed to happen in two weeks. Now's the time to look at it because the chart is set up for a launch. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Scoping out ticker CAVR Paragon X Holdings. This is a six month, four hour view. Our high bubble that came in November of last year, about 1.8 cents. She fell all the way down here to 003 at the beginning of May. And it was off that low bubble, she changed her trend. She has been pushing up very slowly, crossing the 50 with a lot of enthusiasm, then took off running to get up over that 200, dipped under it, and right now after testing it once, she is sitting there perfectly with all this volume coming into the picture. As you can see, all of our oscillators are pointing up strong right now. They had that pullback and dip, but right now they're all turned around and looking like they're ready to launch. Our 20 day, one hour view. So about eight days, she was underneath the 200 here. Once she got on top of the 50, I mean, she did get up on top of the 200 here, but she was really fighting to get over that 50. She's still bouncing on it here, still bouncing on it. And once we had our crossover, the 50 over our 200 day SMA, which is called the golden cross. That is one of the most strongest signals on the charts. This is when everything launched everybody's looking at the charts that's when it looked like to be a buy signal and you see the big bars here she got up on top of that nine day sma and climbed for three days finishing up here at double zero eight seven falling back only to the 50 she has not come anywhere near the 200 she's bouncing off of that really strong right now floating on that nine day sma again 
we've got a recovery on our oscillators. Every single one of them shows this big fall and turning up right now really strong. Five day, five minute. So we had a nice climb here hitting that high and then a very quick fall. You can see she tried to struggle hanging on to the 200 here, dipped, hitting a low of double zero five, took about a day and a half before she got up on top of the 200 again, taking her last bounce and it looks like she's off and running. And here we go. Our 50 day SMA is just about ready to cross the 200. That is another golden cross, which means people are gonna be watching it, seeing it as a buy signal. So I'd be keeping my eyes on this. Oscillators, same thing here. They've all started turning up and getting stronger right now. Our RSI is clear up at 68 on the five minute. Definitely worth the watch for the next few days, folks. C-A-V-R. The chart is set up beautifully. It was a big piece of news, but the real catalyst is that they should close this before the end of June. Then it should get a nice pop if she's still in this position. Right then, let's have a go at BLMS, Blumio Sync. This is a penny stock on the OTC. And like all the stocks we talk about, I found this by looking at the charts first. And what stood out? the explosion in volume. But it was contrasting to the fact that the price wasn't moving. Now it is set up in that atypical breakout chart. You got the 200 day SMA coming down, leveling out, price right up underneath it, and it should start working its way towards the 200. Well, it's not doing that, but you've got all this volume coming in, looking like something's happening or something's building up. So when I came over here looking for the catalyst, I did see that they're doing great on revenues. Quarter over quarter, they're growing. Year over year, they're growing. But why? Well, I went further back. It was in October, it looks like. They made a huge deal for like $22, $23 million, which expanded their operations and their revenues. And I think now we're just beginning to see the effects of that and things could be getting much better real quick. So now could be a good time to look at this. BLMS, she finished the day at eight cents just a little over 11% gains. She's on the better tier. This is the QB, the middle tier of the OTC. It's better because they have to audit their financials. This actually gives us fundamentals. You get a CPA looking at those numbers, doing all the accounting. We get actual factual figures we can use. That simply makes them more trustworthy, more transparent. And they've got those two green ticks we always wanna see. So they look really good. So what is this company about? Well, surprisingly enough, they're a cannabis company, though not the smoking the flower part, all the derivatives, the vapes, the hemp's, stuff like that. They tell us here that Blumios manufactures, markets, and distributes U.S. hemp-derived supplements and cosmetic products through wholesale distribution channels and its wholly owned subsidiary, Blumios Private Label. The company provides custom formulation, brand development, manufacturing, and order fulfillment to a wide variety of customers, including small and major brands, chain stores, vape shops, and distributors. It offers private label and white label customers a wide selection of more than 80 customizable hemp products across seven categories. And white label is huge business. Instead of just making a product and putting a label out there and selling it like that, you make that product and you put your label on it, someone else's label, someone else's label, someone else's label. You sell the exact same product with everybody else's label on it. Maybe a different bottle, but it's the exact same product. But they also make private customizable products as well. So they're doing a lot for a lot of different people and they're doing well doing it. Wow. <laughs> so let's go check out the relative volume on the company. Right, right. This is Monday holiday. They cleared the board from Friday. So jumping over here to Yahoo Finance, I have put in the right ticker, Blue Meals up here. They tell us on Friday that her volume was 418,000 shares. Not a lot of shares, I know, but it is comparatively speaking. And I notice here that there's no volume on the 15th, which is Thursday and Wednesday. It didn't look like that on the chart. We'll take a closer look when we get to the chart. But looking at the volume, 418,000 is what she did. Her average is 80,000. So she did over five times as much, 500% increase, but the price hasn't risen. It hasn't dropped either. It's just going sideways. So I figure something's building up here. 
share structure for BLMS. It looks like we got a low float here. I'm going to presume, first off, we know the outstanding shares is only $32 million. So the float isn't going to be more than that. And if we subtract the restricted shares, the shares owned by the insiders, the management, hedge funds, institutions, if that number's correct, well, what's left is 6.2 million. That would be our float. That's what's on the open market. That's a low float. Anything under 10 million is great. So we're not absolutely sure that's it. It looks promising, but it won't be anything more than 32. Financials for BLMS, up and down. Back in 2020, we were at 1.3 million, jumped clear up to 8.5 and fell back to six at the end of 2022, keeping $2.2 million. Quarterly, um, she's growing, actually getting better, right? Look at that. We're going from 1.2 to 1.2 to 2.1 to 2.7. So things are building up momentum right now. Revenues are getting stronger, which they said they would, as you're gonna see in the news. Looking at the disclosures for the company. We've got a recent 10Q. This is their quarterly financial. Best place to do your homework if you want to learn about a company. Forget about running around Google, going from site to site, and don't think about going through all the news presses. Just go through one filing, the 10Q, the most recent, or 10K, better yet. There's a little more information in a 10K, but that's your best place to get all the information you want. Outside of that, we don't have any other SEC filings to consider. Let's take a look at that news. As I previously said, I had to find the catalyst by scrolling back into old news. And I went all the way back here to May of last year. But it was the current news that came out here in June that got me interested in looking further back. They had that increase in revenues. The company reported Q1 revenues up 30% over last quarter and 84% year over year. But when I looked back here, I seen they were already building up strength. They were getting momentum going. Blumios expands production capacity by 300%, setting the stage for strong growth in 2022. And they've lived up to that. They've also added a whole bunch of new products into their line. They're now working with ashwagandha, metatonin, kratom, lion's mane, valerian root, reishi mushrooms, and other natural ingredients. So this gives you an idea of what sort of products they're working with. Now, it was this news. This came out October 27th. That is the cause for all of the revenue growth and I think is the reason for the tsunami that's about to come. This came out October 27th. Blumios completes $23.5 million acquisition of leading gummy manufacturer. Blue Mill Sink, a leading white label and private label manufacturer and wholesaler of hemp-derived nutraceutical, cosmetics, and pet products, has acquired Infusions, a wholly owned subsidiary of Upexi. This is a company on the NASDAQ, ticker UPXI. Now, they just didn't buy this from them. It's a lot more than that. Through this transaction, Upexi and Blue Mills have forged a long-term partnership. Moving forward, Blumios will manufacture the products retained by Upexi, and Upexi will provide the significant financing enabling the transaction. The acquisition includes Infusion's portfolio of CBD gummy brands and customers, along with its associated order flow, product formulations, manufacturing operations, and equipment and sales team, the kit and caboodle, for a total purchase price of $23.5 million. The added operations are expected to more than double Blumio's current production capacity across key production lines while reducing redundant costs. Of course, you don't want to duplicate equipment if you don't have to when you bring the two companies together. This acquisition is going to be bringing in $22 million in annualized gross revenue. What are they doing right now? $11 million? And we're going to add another $22 million onto it? Huge catalyst, folks. This acquisition is highly accredited, and we believe that it will position Blumios to uplist to the NASDAQ. Further, it will allow the company to acquire additional complementary manufacturing operations and brands. So they got plans to uplist. They're doing more business. They've got more operations they can do. They've got a more customer base that came with this deal. 
everything. So I think now is a great time to look at it. And even though the price isn't moving, the volume's coming in. The line is building up before the doors open up. So now may be an excellent time to consider it. Let's go take a look at that chart. Well, let's do some charting for BLMS. This is Blumios. This is a six month, four hour view. And of course, our high is six months ago, $2.75 in October. And it looks like we hit our low bubble pre-market on Friday of six cents. Now, as you can see, there was nil volume back here. Right now, the volume is just exploding. It is incredible. Now, I also notice our 200 day SMA has come into the picture. Is that a coincidence? Another thing I notice when you see a new SMA come into the picture, they have a gravitational field around them. They suck the price to them. Whether it be below them or above them, the price normally goes towards that new strong SMA. So that could help the price rise. Looking at the oscillators, well, I can see a divergence here. You can see our price is falling. It is falling here and you see our MACD is rising. That's opposite. When the MACD rises, the price normally rises with it. So we got the opposite going, called a divergence. Well, that's got a snap, pop, crack, break. And when it does, it opens up and it allows a whole lot of pressure to come in, which forces the price to go up. So we could see that. However, our RSI is below the basement. <laughs> We're at 26. I don't like to be below 55 and I darn sure don't don't want to be below the floor of 30. So it's in hard shape right now even though we have all of this volume coming in. What we've really got happening here is consolidation, accumulation. People are buying shares and selling shares all at this same price. A lot of them. A lot of them. So it's not that there isn't any interest. It just hasn't moved yet with that interest, but she is getting close to everything. She just needs a match. <laughs> Let's take a look at that 20 day, one hour view. So she's coming down off of a high of 55 cents. It was actually a Thursday. Thursday, she hit that low of six cents. She has bounced off of that and is roughly eight cents right now. She is real close to the 50 day SMA. This is so tempting. All we need is someone to sneeze, to push it, and it would take off. One piece of news, a tweet from the company would really help right now. We've still got that divergence. You can see our MACD is climbing up, 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 and our price has been coming down. Not as fast, but there is a divergence there. Woohoo! RSI has finally come up out from underneath the basement. That is at 36. And our uh, PPO here, it's just flatlining. It hasn't made up its mind what it's doing. It's a lot like the price. Five day, five minute. All right, let's see what we got going here. We're underneath everything. <laughs> and we are. The price is underneath every single SMA. Doesn't look like we have a 200 day SMA on the chart. She's been under it most of this time. Her high in the last five days has been 11 and a half cents, hitting a low of six cents, and she's right in the middle right now at eight cents. Volume has been there all through the week. I'm expecting it to be there. She is getting close to the 200 or the 50 day here as well. Folks, it's the same on every single time chart. She is close to a breakout. She needs a catalyst. She needs a good push or a soft sneeze. She needs something to get her going, but she is right there. And if we can catch this, we can catch it at a better time. So BLMS, I would say watch for the volume, but the volume's already here. So watch for the news, watch for the price to start to rise. That could be what we're looking for. BLMS, it's got my curiosity. I do thank you for stopping by on the holiday weekend. Actually, I guess it was two holidays, wasn't it? We had Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all you dads out there. And then we got Juneteenth, the new holiday for America. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what to say for Juneteenth. In either case, I appreciate you stopping by. Now, I didn't get as much research done over the weekend because I took some time to myself as well. So there's no hot charts in this video, but we do have three hot stocks that need some more research. So go do some more due diligence. Remember, the more you know, the more you're gonna grow. See you, folks.